Welcome to another edition of the Giants Huddle Podcast, brought to you by Citizens, the official bank of the Giants. I am John Schmuck. Very proud to welcome in Brian Baldinger. He'll be a regular guest with us throughout the year as Baldy Breakdowns will be showing up on our social media channels as well. Baldy, it's good to see you, man. How are you? John, I'm good. I'm good to be with you here. I mean, it was a uh, you know it was a tough loss for the Giants yesterday because they did a lot of good things. They actually played really good red zone defense. We saw Malik Neighbors look like a real star in this business. We saw a run game yesterday, you know, that uh, was missing week one, and that was encouraging. So there's a lot of good things to build upon. Yeah, unfortunately, one thing that didn't go so well for them, Baldy, was their non-red zone defense. The commanders do not punt all day. They do not turn the ball over all day. They scored on every possession. They're all field goals. But they hold the ball for basically 38 minutes of the game. The Giants only have seven possessions on offense. So let's start with the running game first. Giants give up more than 200 yards rushing, about 180 in terms of the traditional non-quarterback run game. What did you see from this run defense that made it struggle so mightily against the Commanders? Well, we saw you know Brian Robinson Jr. get a, a number of explosive runs, the 40-yarder, just flip field position. I mean, that's that's the result of, honestly, not getting off two things, not getting off blocks and not tackling well. Because there's opportunities to get him to the ground. Now, he's like a lot of good backs in this league. He's powerful. But, you know, you, you got to get the legs. You got to wrap up. And you got to get off blocks, John. And if you don't do that, whether it's Brian Robinson, it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, even Eckler had an explosive run. You know, like they did not tackle well. And I didn't think they got off blocks well. Yeah, and I think – and they also sometimes weren't gap sound. Uh, Baldy, and how much of that do you think? And this is not me making excuses. I'm just talking from a football perspective. Around the league, is tackling where it needs to be right now, or is this no. still the product of a shorter preseason and guys not playing a lot in the preseason? I'm I'm, I'm going to sound like you know, I'm making excuses here, John, but I I feel like September's the new August. I mean, you could you could you you're out of practice every day, John. You know they they work on tackling, but it's not tackling. You know they're just you know they're 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 tackling tires and they're doing stuff out there on the field to imitate it because of the limitations they have with full contact and stuff like that. I feel like it takes a couple of weeks. Some teams do it better than others this early in the season, but you know, tackling is, um, it's a whole lot of one, two. It's getting off blocks. They were not gap sound. Like I, you know, the run fits are important. You, I don't care what defense you're in. I don't care what, what Shane, Shane Bone is running. You have to, it's run defense starts with being in the right gaps and then squeezing. And so that limits the number of the amount of space that a back like Robinson or Eckler can go find in your defense. Is that something with practice can get better, Baldy? Is that something that it's a it, it's it's a one time thing? How does that improve from week to week here? If you're the Giants coaching staff and players, well, it can improve. I mean, it, it, it starts with just okay. This is what we're going to focus on. We're going to focus on this. We're going to squeeze the run. Uh, we're, we're going to get off blocks. Because honestly, you anybody can defeat blocks. It's just the mindset of I'm not going to be blocked. I don't care if it's an angle block. I'm going to figure out how to defeat the angle block. If it's a double team, I'm going to drop my knee, corkscrew my knee in the ground. I'm going to split the double team. I mean, wherever you're at, if you're a defensive back and you're being screened, I'm going to attack the, the blocker. Like every every position is is in the run game is being blocked. Now, are you going to be blocked? Or are you going to refuse to be blocked? And that, I think it starts really with the mindset, John. Now, boy, this has been a problem for the Giants the last two years under Wink Martindale, right? They have not stopped yeah. the run well for a couple of years. They bring in Shane Bowen, completely different defensive scheme, and a scheme that, by the way, has a great history of stopping the well, uh, stopping the run very well when he was yeah. uh, in, in Tennessee. Tennessee. So we know schematically this can be done. So this seems like more of a player execution thing to me. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Now, look, I, I I think that they're a little, you know, short on defensive linemen, personally. Like, I feel like it's not the, the strongest position when Dexter goes out of the game. It's a, it's a big loss. It's a big drop-off. And by the way, I mean, a couple of those big runs did happen when Dexter was not on the field, by the way. It, it's, it's noticeable. I mean, big Dexter's not out there. Now, he comes from Tennessee. I mean, they put their resources at the defensive line position. They were a dominant group. It started with Jeffrey Simmons, but all the guys they had in there I mean, they had beef. They had guys that knew how to defeat blocks. And also, they had got, you know good pass rushers. They had a dominant defense. At one point, when Shane was there, they were the number one defense in football. And, um, you know, and I think it all started with a very deep and talented defensive line. I, 
I don't think interiorly right now they're as strong as what he saw in Tennessee. And I think you do feel the loss of Ashawn Robinson from last year, too. He was a very good run defender for them, and oh, I do think yeah. they are feeling that loss a little bit, too. All right, how about the secondary? Uh, there were a couple plays, Baldy, where, you know, guys were wide open. Noah Brown on one play, no one within 10 or 15 yards of him in the middle of the field. And Noah Brown, he's a good player, but not what anyone would call a speedster by any means, right? Uh, very young secondary, though. They play a lot of first, second, and third-year guys. Is that something you notice when you watch a secondary, that, that they are young and they're still trying to figure out this system a little bit? I think so. I mean, you look, Andrew's out there. Tyler's out there. Deontay is still young. I mean, there's a lot of youth there. I mean, you know, Dory came in because they, they just needed another corner. So, you know, I see giant safeties around the league. Xavier McKinney, you know, Julian Love, guys that moved on that, you know, had that experience in the back end. If you're not getting lined up correctly and you're not in the right space, like you're you're going to have – breakdowns in the secondary uh if you're if, if it starts with being lined up and then getting the right calls and then executing the calls i think that starts with that um you know i think they had trouble you know just man coverage against zach Ertz. you know he's a very experienced guy so he had a, a number of big catches against him so uh it is about communication uh we we knew that though with with andrew and playing inside and with you know tyler playing the safety position we thought that they would experience some growing pains, you know, basically playing a lot of rookies in the back end. You're ready for a change. Payday comes early with citizens. So go to that retreat. New you moves to the country. Now you're raising goats and launching a lifestyle brand. Are you ready for all that life brings? Yeah, and, and Baldy, I, I went through it here uh, when I did my notes on the game. And it's one thing to give up run plays on early downs. I get that. That's going to happen from time to time. But even the times where the Giants did have a chance to get the commanders in the third and longs, they struggled getting them off the field in some of those third and long situations. And I, I looked at some of the third and long here, and some of the numbers that they gave up in, in, in terms of some of these downs and distances were, were just plays you can't have. And I wrote them down here. They gave up third, a third and nine conversion two third and 13 conversions on the same drive, yes. a yes. third and eight conversion. Then there was a third and 10 and a third and 14 where they gave up nine yards and 13 yards to set up yeah. a fourth and one. Some of those were Jaden Daniel scrambles, which you got to be prepared for heading into the game. Others, I think one was a little middle screen to Eckler over the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there were a couple of different plays there. So third and longs. That's kind of what the Shane Bowen defense is designed for, right? He's supposed to play top down to keep things in front of you. Is that just a matter of not understanding where the sticks are and where you're on in the field on those third and long situations? Well, I, I, look, I, I thought they played soft in some of those situations. I just thought they gave up way too much space, you know, and they got to tighten it up. I mean, you got to get off the field. It's third and 13, John. You have to get off the field. Yeah. I, occasionally, they were 7 of 14 on third downs. A lot of them, like you described, they were – they completed their fourth, you know, they converted their fourth down conversion. You you might give up an occasional third and 10 plus, but not like that. You've got to get off the field. You just do. You've got to put them in a kicking situation at that point. Um, and that's, I'm sure they're in the film room today. I hope they are. And I hope it's getting drilled into them today. John Tuttle is brought to you by Citizens, the official bank of the Giants, from game day celebrations to your everyday financial needs. Big Blue fans can get the most out of every moment with Citizens. Learn more at citizensbank.com slash Giants. Two positives on the defensive end I want to touch on here, Baldy. The first one, what you already mentioned, the red zone defense. Seven field goals. Now they were helped by four commander's penalties inside the red zone, three of which I believe were procedural, false star penalties. So obviously they got some assistance there. But Shane, what is, you know, besides the run defense, Shane Bowen historically has been very good in the red zone. What did you see from the Giants' red zone defense that you liked? Well, I thought, I thought, you know, although it doesn't really show up in, in the stat column today, I thought Brian Burns and Kayvon had some good rushes down there in the red zone that forced, you know, some errant throws and some, you know, quick decisions by Jaden. I thought that was uh, good. And I just thought that they, they tightened up where you have to tighten up right there. And there wasn't a lot of space for Jaden, you know, to get some balls in. Uh, he's a talented kid, but, uh, you know, he still is kind of a one read guy. And then, you know, he wants yeah. to go. So you take that first read away. I think, you know, he's he's looking to move. He's looking to do something with his athletic ability. Yeah. The other guy I thought was a real positive was Andrew Phillips. Drew Phillips, a giant no rookie corner. The big uh, hit. He, he had was, a big hit. He had uh, a really big hit. Dude, you know, him and Tyler machine. hit Jaden and then 
you know, Drew really, he really put the smack down. I, you could see, like, Jaden was, like, he, he got up real slow from that hit right there. Yeah, he put his helmet right on his right on his ribcage, to be yeah. honest with you. I thought Jaden might have had a might have fractured a rib, to be honest with you, the way he kind of limped off the field after that hit. And that was down the field. There was a play where he came in on a pass rush reading the scramble. And yep, Jaden no right doubt. now, Baldy, as you know, he's not scrambling to pass right now. He's no. scrambling to run. And I thought the Giants did a pretty good job in this game. Pinnock did it a couple times. Okereke had one. Uh, Phillips had one where on those scrambles and Phillips in a couple of those times kind of darted out of the slot and attacked on some of those scramble plays. I thought Shane, you know, had a number of good pressure calls, you know, which was forcing him to move. That's what Todd Bowles did the week before. Uh, you know, he pressured him when it was, I don't know, 41 to 17, like he was still coming <laughs> after him with certain looks, you know, because, you know, the kid was starting to read the rush. And once the defense coordinators were seeing that you got to keep bringing it now. Um, you know, to, to the point where, you know, Jason and O'Karakey, uh, they and, and then Drew Phillips, too. Like they had some good rushes, some free hitters coming at them. I thought that was, you know, some good calls and good execution of those. Yeah, and just, I thought Phillips tackling. Like, you, you're always looking for slot corners, especially that are willing to tackle ball. They have to be so good in the they game. To. And he fits. Like, there were some inside run fits inside the tight end where he was getting in there. And just his willingness to tackle and his physicality. We got to see about the coverage, though. He got called for one defensive holding, yeah. one of the three defensive holdings that Zach Ertz forced during the game. But I, I thought just his run inserts, probably one of the only few guys who had was really, really good in terms of his run inserts over the course of the game. It showed up. It showed up. I mean, the, you, to play that position, um, you you have to have the mentality of the linebacker. You, don't, you can't be black. You have to be physical. Uh, there's people are going to come at you from all different directions in there and your ability to either slip blocks to see them coming. Um, it, it's a, such an instinctive position. The good ones, we know who they are in this business, but they earn that right of being that third corner. They're starters uh, by nature, just because of the number of 11 personnel offenses in this business where you got to have somebody that can cover the slot, whether it's tight end receiver. So it, it requires just a great skill set to be good at that. But but if you're physical and you're a good tackler, that's a big part of it. Absolutely. All right, let's jump to the offensive side of the ball, Baldy. We're after a, a pretty brutal week one from the offensive side of the ball for the Giants. Much better in week two. And frankly, I thought it started with the offensive line. This was the best Giants offensive line I've probably seen in two or three years. Uh, just very solid. They're not a lot of pressure on Daniel Jones. He could actually settle in the pocket and look at two sides of the field. I mean, who could believe it? And they're, and I thought they were pretty good in the run game as well. Well, they were. I started first play. I'm noticing to tell went right up the middle for eight yards in the first run of the day. I, I just thought um, all the things, because it, it's, you know, the, the offensive line, as you know, John, it, 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 it yes, you got to upgrade the positions. Illuminar, Van Roten over there on the right side. They've had a lot of experience together. Run you now and Andrew Thomas, you know, and now John, John Michael Schmidt staying healthy and staying on the field. But you have to learn how to play together. You know, and I thought um, I thought week one, I thought it was real spotty. Uh, just, you know, where they're pushing the double teams to. I thought, uh, and I thought Daniel had a number of good checks in the run game, just recognizing a, a box that was more run, um, you know, inviting and checking to the run when he, he could he could throw it in those situations. I thought they were foot to foot, shoulder to shoulder on the double teams. I thought they got movement at the point, John. Um, it was it was really good to see. And then protection-wise, they were sound. They were very, very sound. And not that the commanders have a lot of great pass rushers. They don't. It's it's a weakness of theirs. But, you know, Dan Quinn, um, in his three years in Dallas, I mean, nobody had more takeaways than the Cowboys in three years. So that's what they kind of prey upon, and the Giants did a good job of taking care of the football. Yeah, going back to the run game, Baldy, I thought one of the reasons the Giants struggled so much in week one, the Vikings showed them a bunch of too high safety looks, and the Giants tried to run the ball out of those looks, and they couldn't. They were no. getting two, three yards per carry. And the commanders, despite the fact, historically, Dan Quinn actually likes to play a lot of single high, right? A lot mm -hmm. of cover one, a lot of cover three. He came out in a lot of two high safety looks in this game, and he, I think he dared the Giants to run the football. And unlike week one, they were able to take advantage of those looks. Well, you saw, um, I don't know if people really understand what Motor Singletary is about. You go back to his days at FAU, you know, Buffalo last year in Houston. I mean, this guy... He's got great contact balance. Yeah. He's difficult to tackle. He's not going to, he's not running 50 yards, you know, for scores like that. But the way that they used him, he had a number of runs where he was on to the safety, you know, and he's making the safety miss. You know, he had some explosive runs inside between the tackles, 
Like he's a very talented back and he's very dependable. And I don't want to get into too much run game nerdery here, but as teams play more of this like shell coverage, Baldy, we're seeing the revival of good old fashioned downhill. You mentioned those dual blocks, power football, where you just block it up, let the running back choose a gap and let him go. And that's becoming more and more pervasive around the league. And I thought the Giants really did lean into that against the commanders. And I honestly, you, know, you talk to any of the guys up front, you know, today, you know, look, nobody feels good about a loss, but the guys feel good about how they, I thought they won the line of scrimmage. Yeah. And linemen know that they know if they have not, now they had a chance at the very end of the game, you know, you know, I mean, they, they dropped the pass on the sideline. They, they could have put that game on ice. They, they weren't able to do it. It happens. But I thought the offensive line took the fight to the commanders. They, they pay those defensive tackles at Washington a lot of money. They pay that middle linebacker, Bobby Wagner, a lot of money. Frankie Louvre was a big free agent acquisition to that team. Um, they went right at him. I thought they, they handled him up front pretty good. You love turf. You're good at it. So you start a turf biz. Business grows. Your savings grow. Become the most celebrated name in turf. Are you ready for all that life brings? Yeah, I, I thought they did as well. And then for Devin Singletary, you mentioned it. Uh, I think 10 mis uh, forced missed tackles by you know some of the analytics sites out there. Made guys miss, turned six-yard runs into 15-yard runs, which, which is what you want to see from your running back. But that fumble was a killer, man. Like You run the ball left, he had the ball in his inside arm, and in a game yep, where your no defense doubt. couldn't get a stop – that takes away a possession, and I know Motor was really, you know, beating himself up after the and game. He's not a fumble. fumble. He's not a fumble, but John, you pointed out the ball was in his right hand. The, the, it, the, you know, any linebacker, anybody coming at you, if they see the ball inside out on that inside hand, and not, they're going for it. It's a target. Like I saw Bobby Wagner do that to Brees Hall on Monday night. If that ball's not in the right hand, you've got to protect yourself. And you've got to put that ball to the sideline, and that's Motor knows that. I mean, he, he came into this business. Frank Gore was there in Buffalo. Frank Gore trained Motor Singletary. Like, he knows the fundamentals of the game. That, that was a costly error. Two more things on the offensive side of the ball. First, Daniel Jones, Baldy, certainly better than he was in week one. Uh, I still thought maybe he was a tick late on some throws, but overall accurate. His, you know, they talked about having a better, more of a firm base this week. I thought his balance was much better, why he was accurate on some of those balls. And he looked much more like the good version of Daniel Jones we've seen in the past. I agree. I agree. I, I think he's – look, I, I will just concentrate on the good here um, because I still think he is not, not throwing with the anticipation he needs to in this business against great defenses. And then I think the accuracy is still a little bit questionable, but there's no question it was a big improvement. And he looked much more comfortable. He wasn't looking just to dart and take off, uh, you know, and get outside the pocket. He trusted the protection, which is the most important thing. He, he ran into sacks in week one, man. He ran into a lot of sacks right in week one. It. No, no question about it. And uh, I thought, you know, I'm sure it was pointed out by Brian and his staff. You know, you, you've got to trust the protection, stay there and go through these progressions. These plays work, uh, you know, and deliver the ball. And he did that. John Suttle is brought to you by Citizens, the official bank of the Giants. Citizens will donate 750 bucks to the Giants Foundation for each scoring drive during the 2024 season. Learn more at citizensbank.com slash Giants. And I don't want to bury the lead on the offense, Baldy, but this is why the Giants picked the league neighbor sixth overall. That guy's pretty special. Just one little eight-yard pass can turn into a 25-yard game kind of like that. Well, I, I, I said it in, in one of the breakdowns. These kids from LSU are pretty advanced students. I mean, you know, there's a reason why he's the all-time lead receiver in a school that spits out receivers as much as anybody. But, you know, he's got a plan to get open. He's got a plan after the catch. Like, he's not – you know, he, it's going to be difficult to tackle him. He knows where the defender is. He knows, you know, where the opening is. You saw a bunch of stop routes at the top that he spun and turned into big gains. Uh, he is, uh, he catches everything with his hands. Um, you know, he, he's a talented guy. Look, I don't know, John, you, you, you know, way better than me. I can't remember a giant receiver being targeted 18 times. Odell, you know, I, maybe, maybe Odell, maybe, may, may, maybe Odell in one of his, you know, great, one of his great seasons, possibly. But even that seems like it might be a little bit stretched. But, you know, what they did was that they really put him to the single receiver side, yeah. let him go to work, you know, against the corner, whether he was the X or whether he was uh, the flanker on the play. They ran just old West Coast Jerry Rice flanker drives coming across the formation. You get him on a full head of steam with his speed and strength. I mean, you know, um, 
he had a bunch of chunk plays like that. I mean, he ran the route tree on. He, he had a comeback up uh, on the left side there, 16-yard comeback, put the foot in the ground, uh, drove off the corner. I mean, just, you know, he's he's an elite talent, and that's why he was chosen where he was. Yeah, and a lot of his yards came on run after the catch in this game, and he had a couple steps on a couple deep balls. Boy, maybe six Close. inches overthrown down yeah. the left sideline. That pass was right there, just right overthrown. There. And then the deep post over the top. He threw it outside when he probably should have let him inside a little bit. But I think those throws over the top are going to be there, even if we yeah. haven't seen them yet in the first two weeks. No, it's, it's coming. It's coming. And usually, I remember just talking to Troy Aikman back in the day, just with Mike Irvin and his group. Like, he always thought the deep ball was the last thing to come. Just because it's really hard to practice, John. It's yeah. hard, like, to, to tell Malik, okay, you're going to go 90 miles an hour on Wednesday here on this route. Like, you're going to run, but probably not game speed. It's just Hard to get that timing down. He beat the corner cleanly. Um, you'd, you'd love to just, you know, put a, just a touch more air on that ball and let him just run underneath it. But I believe that those big plays are going to come. Yeah, and if he gets more attention, then you'll get him out of Slayton and Hyatt on the other side with their speed. So one way or the other, he's going to help draw some coverage. All right, next week's opponent, real quick, Baldy, before we say goodbye. It's the Browns. Uh, this has the makings of a potential slop fest. That's what a lot of these Browns games look like. They just have a really good defense, and Deshaun Watson hasn't quite figured things out yet there at quarterback. So I'm not sure if you watched the Browns yet in this in this week number two. I know you did in week one. What do you think this matchup is going to look like next week for Giants and Browns? Well, you know, if you look at the Giants' offense, I mean, Jim Schwartz is a Super Bowl winning you know defensive coordinator, and he's he probably plays more man covers than anybody. Yep. And they got a bunch of guys, Denzel Ward, Martin Emerson Jr. Like they got a bunch of guys that love playing man coverage. And then look, I mean, I would pay stub hub prices right here to go watch, you know, Andrew Thomas and Miles Garrett get oh, out. It's going to be I mean, fun. He, he, he's going to, he'll go over both sides. He'll go over Luminar. He'll, he'll switch, but he is a force Two in two games. Now, you know, he's got two force fumbles, two sacks, force fumbles. You know, he did against Dallas. He did against yesterday. Zedarius is a factor. We know Dalvin Tomlinson. He's still a force inside. Um, they're, they're a very talented defense. And so if you're going to run the ball or you're going to, you know, complete passes against, I mean, Dallas beat them badly week one. They had 260 yards of total offense. Yeah, Dak Prescott had 189 passing yards. It wasn't a lot. Like they, they didn't put up a they, – they didn't move the ball a lot. Um, they basically tried to just game plan around Miles Garrett. And, you know, they, they weren't getting – they had a couple big plays. That's it. But that's what you're going up against. You have to execute against that team. And then, look, there's, nobody thinks that Deshaun is is anywhere near what he was. But he was better yesterday than he was week one. Mm -hmm. um, week one, for whatever reason, they, they dropped back 51 times against the Cowboys. And Deshaun got hit 17 times. He was sacked six times. They, they got a lot more balance in the offense. And that's what Kevin Stefanski is. I mean, he's a run first type guy, play action pass guy. They certainly have guys that can hurt you with, you know, Amari and Joku. Um, I wouldn't take any of the backs lightly. Um, they're built around the run game. And so that's where it's got to start. And obviously it's been a problem. And so that has to get fixed against a team that that's, I mean, if they get success in the run game, John, they will stay with it. Now I'm with you, Baldy. I think stopping the run next week, that that becomes a necessity if you want to walk out of that game with a victory. Baldy, good stuff, my friend. It's great to have yeah. you on board this year, and we look forward to talking to you down the road, my friend. Enjoy your football this week. All right, John. Thanks a lot for having me, buddy. I'll talk to you soon. Brian Baldinger, John Settle Podcast, brought to you by Citizens, the official bank of the Giants. We'll see you next time, everybody. 